Hello, my name is Colton Roan, and uh, I wanted to share with you guys uh, a short lesson on just standing for truth. Uh, I do want to say that in everything that's been happening over the last couple weeks and even months, uh, I do very much still love the movement and I love the people. Uh, some of my best friends uh, are in the church. Uh, the church has given me so much in my life and I'm super grateful. Uh, giving me salvation, the teachings of Jesus, uh, helping me become a speaker, a preacher. Uh, I met my wife in the church, our kids. Uh, just so much uh, good has come uh, from the church. And, and uh, it, it saddens me to have to go down this, this road. Um, but I felt compelled by the Holy Spirit uh, to share with you uh, what I've been sharing and what I'm about to share. I do want to say thank you to those who have just shown us love and support, uh, just your prayers. Uh, it's, it's amazing how many people across the world have reached out to me in the last three to four days. Uh, it's, it's actually overwhelming, uh, the amount of love. And so I just want to say thank you. Uh, you know, it, it breaks my heart to hear some of the stories that people have shared about just not even being able to be in the kingdom uh, because of the financial pressure that they just couldn't be a part of things and, and try to go somewhere or find something and it just uh, felt like they've been lost and um, I hope that this uh, brings some healing these scriptures bring some healing and that these teachings really do help you in your walk with Christ and I really do uh, believe that when I was taking this stand I, I really didn't want to go down this road and even uh, post anything I I really wanted to just go and spend 40 days in the desert with God I, I wanted to be in the wilderness uh, like like some of the great guys in the past in the Bible that we read about, you know, just go spend time with God and sort of speak, kind of be in the cave of Adullam. Uh, not to say that I'm David or that anybody saw, it's just I wanted to go and spend time with my Lord. And uh, after the 14th, when we decided to resign and step down, we did get seven days. And uh, seven days we were able to read and, and pray and dig into our Bibles. And uh, God really uh, showed me a lot of incredible insights I feel just uh, that I never saw before and uh, but on the eighth day uh, there was a marking letter that came out against us and uh, the one thing that we really requested we didn't want to happen and when that came out and, and uh, really I think hurt a lot of people uh, I felt compelled by the Holy Spirit to to take a stand and to really start sharing what's what's been going on I know that uh, for some people, uh, things might be a little confusing uh, right now, but my, my hope is to not draw anyone away from Christ, but in fact, strengthen your walk with Jesus. And uh, me and Mandy have been praying that in, in all of this, that every disciple would stay faithful to Christ and, and grow in their walk with Jesus. You know, um, I had a preacher reach out to me and tell me that what I'm doing is really confusing a lot of young people. Christians and uh, I had a hard time with that idea that I'm causing the, the hardship so I just responded with if people are confused just show them what the Bible says on the topic to clarify and show them that the route and actions that people are taking are in line with God's will and and this will help them be strong Christians and uh, I think as we we study our Bibles I think we're gonna really see all right, what is in line with the scriptures and what is not? Uh, of course, the question that you might be asking is, why is it not in line at times? Uh, for some, uh, hearing this lesson and seeing this stuff, it's, it's kind of like the writing on the wall. It was just obvious. Uh, it was coming. Uh, people have been taking these types of stands for, for generations. And for others, uh, they're just hurt because they're, they're wondering what's going on. And, and my heart actually breaks for the people who don't understand our actions, don't understand what's going on. Uh, and so hopefully these scriptures are going to help uh, people in this. So the first scripture I wanted to look at was Luke chapter 6. And uh, a scripture that many of us have heard and, and have used, but I think that there is a difference between receiving ridicule uh, and receiving persecution. And uh, I'd like to share with you uh, chapter 6, verse 20 of Luke. It says, looking at his disciples, Jesus said, Blessed are you who are poor. For yours is the kingdom of God, and blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. And blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil 
because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven, for that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. And woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. And woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. And woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. You know, the truth is, is that when you take a stand for Jesus and the truth, people are going to say bad things about you. And uh, <laughs> sometimes it's just even making stuff up uh, just to regard your name as, as evil because of Jesus and even slander you or disfellowship you or mark you. Um, but I, I have a conviction that when you see sin, you got to take a stand. You know, I was told by one preacher that he sees things wrong in the church, but for the sake of unity, he stays silent, he stays committed. And, you know, the, the interesting thing about the word unity is unity is the false doctrine's loudest cry, is to be unified. I, I simply replied to him that, you know, I can submit to opinion issues, uh, as I don't feel like we need to take a stand on opinion things, but when it comes to scriptures, when it comes to what is right versus what is wrong, what is righteous versus sin, you got to take a stand. And if you're unwilling to take a stand due to fear, that's cowardness. And Revelation 21 verse 8 says, cowards uh, will not make it to heaven. It is a salvation issue if you're a coward. And, and to be honest with you, I've, I've received so many messages from, from preachers and from members and, and people who have left the church, people who have never been a part of church, so many different types of people. And I, I realized that there's actually a lot of people who have been seeing things that are off, but are just afraid to speak up. I wanted to share John chapter 12 with you, uh, a scripture that we, we really know a lot about because it's, it's in the word study, though normally we don't read it uh, full context. So we start just in verse 48, but I want to show you in verse 42 a little bit more of the context of what Jesus is saying here when it comes to the word being our standard. And in John chapter 12, in verse 42, it says, Yet at the same time, many, even among the leaders, believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they would not openly acknowledge their faith for fear they would be put out of the synagogue. For they loved human praise more than the praise from God. Then Jesus cried out, whoever believes in me does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. The one who looks at me is seeing the one who sent me. I've come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. If anyone hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge that person, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. The very words I have spoken will condemn them at the last day. For I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. I know that his command leads to eternal life, so whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. You know, it's, it's scary to have a decision where if you go with God's word on something, it's, it's going to make some people really mad at you. And that, that can be hard. I, I, I know this from experience because I, I love and I admire so many people in the movement that I knew taking this stand is really going to hurt them. And I just, that, that tore me up uh, inside. And uh, it, was, it was hard. And it took a lot of prayer, a lot of Bible study, and just begging God, please lead me by your spirit. But I do believe the Bible has to have this kind of authority in our lives. Uh, as much as it brings us salvation, it can also bring us condemnation, uh, depending on what we, what we do with it. You know, without speaking bad about anybody, in my last sermon, I, I taught on 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7, and really went into the Greek definitions of the word uh, reluctant or compulsion in talking about giving. And, of course, reluctant can be translated in some English translation as regret, 
Uh, but the Greek is sorrow or grief, and so you're just kind of down that you, you parted with your money. Uh, compulsion, on the other hand, is, is, could be given based on needs or necessity or even pressure. And that's actually how some of the translations uh, translate it, whether it be King James or the New Living Translation, but it is the Greek. And I shared that I'm all for giving, I'm all for sacrifice, uh, people setting their own goals. Uh, but the problem is, is when you have a preacher or leader that calls you to, and this is a quote, by the end of this year, be ready to pledge 20 more dollars a week than what you are giving. Church, American and international, if you found the money to get here, talking about a conference, and that was after a missions contribution, I believe you can find more money to give to God. That's what I'm against. It's interesting that people have been sharing in response to this teaching that I've given on 2 Corinthians 9-7 that it's simply not saying you can't call people to give goals. And that's kind of really all they've shared. They go, well, it's, it's not... It's not against calling people to give financially to goals. And even there was one preacher who made a whole list on why it's okay for ministers to give goals to the people financially. Uh, goals placed on them or asked for them to pray about a certain number. And in this list, the first reason why it was okay for leaders to give goals was Hebrews 13. That says, obey your leaders and submit to their authority. So you have the very first stance of it's okay for us to ask people because you need to obey your leaders. But then later in the list it says, but you're free to make your own goal. Well, how could that be if a leader is asking you to give a set amount and you need to obey your leaders, but then you're free to give your own goal? Is that not an oxymoron? What's sad to me is that nobody's going back to the scripture to teach what it's saying. You know, we firmly believe that we are silent where the Bible speaks. So if the Bible is saying something, we just need to listen to it. And yet I haven't seen anybody go back to 2 Corinthians 9, 7 and say, hey, this is what the scripture is teaching. Rather, they keep telling me what it's not teaching. You know, when I took a stand on this one scripture, uh, they, they deleted all my sermons uh, that I preached here in Columbus, Ohio. And I'm not just talking about... Uh, you know, this last year or the last couple months as they believed I, they were getting rid of like heretic teaching or something. I'm talking about uh, over 150 videos, over 150 sermons are just gone, just, just erased. And I, and I don't think it's just because they wanted to delete maybe a false teaching at one point, uh, but really it's, it's kind of like cancer culture. It's just to remove me from the history as if I've never even been here and... To me, that's kind of very, very sad. Uh, this has been my life. This is what I've done. I've poured my heart and soul into my sermons, uh, and now they're, they're gone. I, I am very uh, fortunate that somebody deleted, uh, or sorry, downloaded my last sermon and then uploaded. I don't know who it is, but uh, thank you for doing that, as it's uh, very encouraging uh, to me. You know, in setting this out... Um, it has been very humbling, uh, to be honest with you, and, and actually a little, a lot embarrassing because for a long time I've been so ignorant on something that's now so obvious, uh, but it is very, very humbling. And I, I, I truly am sorry for the times where I wasn't putting these scriptures into practice. And you could claim, oh, ignorance, ignorance, but you know, according to Leviticus 4, if you're ignorant, uh, it doesn't take away your guilt. And so you're still guilty if, you, if, you, if you're ignorant. And so... I just want to say, hey, look, I, I'm sorry if, if anybody's ever felt uh, that I've gone against 2 Corinthians 9-7 in their life, and uh, I do truly apologize, and I, I, uh, I'm praying that I can uh, really bring the scriptures to light in, in a righteous way. You know, one must, must ask, what, what was so bad about my sermon? Why, why did it make people so upset to the fact that they, they actually deleted it from the YouTube um, under a copyright claim. Uh, you know, you might be thinking, well, did I twist a scripture? Did I slander? Did I gossip? Uh, was I disrespectful? Was, was I just sinful? And, and I think I found the reason 
why it made some people very upset, because it exposed something. Look, look over in Ephesians chapter 5. In Ephesians chapter 5, a, a scripture that's, that's very common in one area about purity, but very less common when it has to deal with money. And yet it, it says this, uh, in verse 3, but among you there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. You know, a lot of times I've, I've heard this scripture, or even preached this scripture, when it had to deal with, you know, a hint of impurity or immorality or these types of things. Uh, but it was really hard to look at it and say, well, well, greed is in here. You know, the Greek word for greed actually uh, can be translated as extortion. And extortion or greediness um, is to wring something like money or information from a person by either violence, intimidation, abuse of authority, force, torture, threat, or, or the like. And when it says that there shouldn't be a hint of these things, what it actually translates as is there should not even be uh, named once among you. So this should never be said amongst the Christians, even one time, this, these things should not even be in someone's mind by looking at your life. And extortion is where there's any level of intimidation. It's hard to look at what things have happened in the past to say there's been no intimidation, there's been no extortion. In fact, when you look at what things have happened, and, and not just, I'm talking, you know, one preacher mishap or uh, one year mishap. I'm talking about from the foundation of what's being taught. Going against 2 Corinthians 9, 7, but seeing it as mentioned more than once, a hint of greed or extortion. You know, the interesting thing about truth is, is some people, they just don't want it. <laughs> You know, when Moses came to free the Israelites out of Egypt in Exodus chapter 2, I mean, he, he killed a guy, uh, so he didn't do it right and had to spend 40 years as a shepherd. But the people really didn't want it. They said, who made you judge and ruler over us? And so after 40 years of being gone, God had to send him back to, to set him free. And while in the desert, there was a group called the, the rabble who craved other food. And so then all the Israelites started to complain about how they longed to go back to Egypt to the land of slavery, Numbers chapter 11. You know, for some people, uh, a high level of control in their life, they, they love it. And in, in fact, they really need it. So for some people, it, it's seen as slavery, but to others, it's, it's what they need. And so, hey, if that's what's going to get you to heaven, awesome, stay be fired up, be totally committed, be sold out, and have that control in your life so that you can get to heaven. Because that's really uh, what's, what's the important thing here, is that people are going to follow Jesus and get to heaven. But for a lot of us, in Galatians chapter, uh, chapter 5, in verse 1, it, it simply says that it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke, of slavery. So there's there's two types of people that are in churches or in movements. Some feel great about the control and, and it's what helps them. While on the other hand, there's a lot of people who feel like it's it's bondage, it's slavery. And and I want to let those people know that there's hope. Uh, that the kingdom is amongst us, it's within y'all. Uh, that the church is universal. We we teach this in one of our, our studies, but Sometimes we forget what it means. Um, the, the truth is, is you, can, you can have options and not stay in a certain church, and you can still be clear in your conscience while looking at the scriptures. And so if you've been feeling that way, but your conscience is like, where do I go? What do I do? Uh, call me, reach out to me. I'd love to talk and share some scriptures with you. 
Because there is a big difference between falling away from Christ and leaving a fellowship because it's not spiritually healthy for you. You know, in, in, in the movement, we understand that there's uh, uh, the church actually started by a leader calling people to join him if they were unhappy, but while believing that they were actually saved outside of his congregation. So most people forget how it even started. Uh, but what's been taught to us over the years is what happens if you leave. And people might uh, disagree on conversations, but it's really true when it comes to the stats. You know, we have a, a membership of every member who gets added, uh, baptized, restored, place membership. But we also have stats on who comes off the membership. And it's really interesting how you can, you know, label somebody coming off your membership. The, the first one is they go on to glory. So they, they died physically. Uh, but they were faithful to Jesus. They, they, they now are resting and, and they're saved and, and they've gone up to, to glory. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, the other one could be a move away. So they moved away from your church, but they're still uh, within the movement. They're still within the group uh, and they're moving away to another visible congregation, uh, but within the, the, the movement. And then there's fall away. So this is what happens, you know, somebody leaving God. Uh, there also could be disfellowship. They could be marked, as in, in our case. Uh, but it's the belief that they've fallen away from God. That's it. That's the only stats you got. So there's never a, a chance of somebody being close with Christ, but leaving the fellowship. And so it's hard for people to unwrap this concept that God and the, the church is not tied together, but they are separate. And, and that's really what we teach with the church universal, that the kingdom is beyond a, a, just a fellowship of a certain church. Uh, the truth is, is I'm, I'm not calling people to come be with me. I'm, I'm actually just trying to help people have freedom in Christ, uh, to not negate the scriptures on leadership in a congregation or anything like that. But I, I believe that Christ is our Lord and our master. And to have fellowship with anyone who belongs to the Lord, I, I think it's great. We can fellowship together, we can meet together, we can take communion together, uh, we can fulfill the one another passages together as we're brothers and sisters in Christ, because Jesus is still our King, and we're still in Christ's kingdom. So if you're free and you want structure and direction that others would call slavery, you're, you're not a bad person. Uh, go join the group. <laughs> the most important thing is for you to get to heaven. Uh, but for those who might be feeling like they're enslaved, that's what I'm talking about. That, that God and his kingdom is much greater uh, than what we might have thought or, or believed. To close out, you know, it's been said that a certain person is, is like Moses as a central leader, uh, using Numbers 27 as a stance of why we need a, a, an individual, flesh and blood, in this seat, the seat of Moses, which I'll be talking a little bit more uh, in the future. But the truth is there's no Moses of today because Jesus is the one man that was spoken about by Moses in Deuteronomy 18 that is our high priest for all time. So he, he is the central leader. Uh, again, I'm going to cover this in the, in the next uh, lesson and sermon, but I, I really do believe that God has helped me understand a lot of things since stepping down and stepping out that has really freed my heart up. Uh, which was some of the hard things of why would you leave if all these things are true? But then you start going back in the scripture and you realize some of them aren't. So guys, I, I hope that you uh, have a better understanding a little bit more on taking a stand for truth. Opinion issues? Amen. Let's get behind uh, the, the, the people that God has put into our life uh, and be willing to, to submit on opinion things. But when it comes to the scriptures... Be willing to take a stand because you, you love Jesus more than anybody else. I love you guys. I hope you, you walk with Christ even more uh, through all of this. And to God be all the glory. Love you.